March 22nd, 9.14 p.m. Gatewater Hotel, Corridor's Hotel Room. Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All, for the Nintendo DS. I'm Samurai TX, and I'm Sword Snake. And when we last left off, um, we began investigating where the... Um, electromagnetic interference was and it was found inside that big stuffed bear and um, it was found in this eye and we found out that one corridor was being recorded no less so um as we spoke to gumshoe and he left edgeruff overheard our conversation and um decided to take the bed see who really bought the um gift for one corridor so yeah without further ado let's continue this investigation it's again late at night it's 9.14 p.m. and we're still investigating, but it doesn't really matter. we got to get find the truth and um, hope to rescue Maya, so let's go. It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd probably say not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can, if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. Y you're right. Oh, don't be sad. Let's talk to Pearls. Not the real killer. So the real person who killed Mr. Corridor was the assassin, Mr. Shelley the killer, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired the killer to begin with? Who was his client? You mean who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands in blood. But whoever's this client is, there's still a killer. Exactly. Was they the one that hired um, an assassin to do their dirty work, so that makes them the killer still, so yeah. Um, let's keep going. If yeah. right, the assassin's client. Who? Who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I don't think so, if I'm honest with you. I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through all the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? <laughs> but if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then... No, it can't be. Madam God himself? Well, that does leave him, to be honest, and I'm starting to think that it is him now. <laughs> because normally, um, when it comes to the um, clients tell confessing something, they do confess whether they murdered someone or not. Adrian Andrews was a bit persistent that she didn't do it, and um, I guess when she did that, and she wasn't lying, and she confessed to what she really did, it only le really leaves Matt on guard in this case. Because we haven't really questioned him or anything about it yet, so... Yeah, I'm guessing that it probably is uh, Matt. But we shall see. That's just a theory of mine, anyway. Was it Matt? If Mr. Ungard really did hire the assassin... Then he is not innocent at all. Far from it. He would be guilty of the crime. <laughs> but... But it can't be Mr. Ungard, right? I mean, we have... When we first talked with him... Yeah, this is the flashback. I'm not going to um, talk, because um, you guys already know what um, happened in the first few m um, videos of this investigation. So yeah, he said he didn't kill him. And we didn't see sight locks, so um, yeah. Um, that's true, we didn't see any. Do you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Um, so what was this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pose? And there's another flashback. So yes, um, he was going to take Matt down with him. So yeah, Matt probably heard that... Um, during the videotape, because um, someone else was um, invest, someone else was spying on them. I'm guessing it was Matt. So if we're um, assuming that Matt was the one that did it, then Matt knew because he was um, spying on Corridor, so he had to get him killed. You know. And Adrian Andrews um, obviously said this in the trial, so 
It wasn't her. I'm guessing. I'm thinking it wasn't her that really murdered um, Wild Corridor. It was obviously the assassin, but Adrian Andrews. I don't believe she was the one that um, hired him. It's just a theory of mine, anyway. Mr. Ungard's secret. But what is this secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corridor was going to reveal this secret. That means. Mr. On Guard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corridor silence. That he does. So we're kind of defending the guilty client here, which kind of sucks. Which means we have to meet Mr. On Which means we have to meet with Mr. On Guard. There's no way around it now. Okay, so we're going to move to... Uh, we're going to move to the Viola Hall, obviously, so let's go. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel. Hallway. Hey, Samurai. Do you really think it was mad? Yeah, I do, to be honest with you now. It's becoming um, very clear now that um, Matt really does have a real big motive in silencing the victim in this case. I agree. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9pm already. But we still have some things to prepare for, for... Sorry. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. It's still the matter of this, this secret Mr. Corridor held about Mr. Ungard. And Miss Andrews' real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think over something close. Don't you worry. Alright. My order hall. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Viola. Oh, jeez. The last person I wanted to see was this old bag. Hey, wait! What is it, Ripper Snapper? All I know is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's... the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Edgy Poo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... <laughs> if you feel angry, direct your anger at that sophistic unsophisticated lawyer. Oh, great. Thanks, Edgeworth. You're a real help, you know that, man? Make an old bag take her frustrations out of me? Why? So I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you, Shani. Ugh, gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are! Great. Fox Weaver. This is absolutely top secret, so you had to keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know, it was to catch poor Juan in the middle of the scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, that gossip that's been going around my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? Well, I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Corridor. I'll let you in on another secret, young un. I know who plotted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious, puffy-haired photographer girl. The nerve of some people... I don't think it was her, if I'm honest with you. Spying on people by herself, as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too. Wow! The alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. Well, I didn't say anything. What an Adrian. So, you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, there's something of a re there's something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had... It's a shame she killed herself, though. 
Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impacts. Miss Adrian. Uh, sorry. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impacts. Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That's Celeste, girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. Wait, really? M married? You mean to Mr. Corridor? You really, you young kids today don't know anything, do you? Well, excuse me for not paying attention to gossip. That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impacts want to kill herself? She was going to get married. Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by one. Wait, what? This is making less sense than... This is making less sense the more I read this stuff. What did Juan... What are you doing, Juan? What? But, but they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but... Three days later, Juan suddenly cancelled their marriage. Oh, you... Why? Way to break a girl's heart, you idiot! You're so stupid! I is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But, but why? Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night after one called off the wedding, that manager Celeste killed herself. How terrible. That must have hurt her feelings, man. Well, I know it would hurt, I know it would hurt, um, I know it would hurt a lot of people's feelings when they announce something, and then, like, a day or two later, you just cancel it, and then just, that's it. You know, it, it would hurt someone's feelings, because, you know, some women and men, we all have that goal, like, we want to get married to the person we love, have children and all that stuff. Yeah, some of us are like that, some of us are not. Some of us just want the married life and not have kids, but, you know, it is what it is. And unfortunately, one did the wrong call and poor old Celeste killed herself. And that is kind of sad because her goal was just taken away from her within, like, 72 hours. That's pretty bad. I wonder what happened between those two. Yeah, there's more to it. For now, we got. Oops, we're not going back here. Sorry, didn't mean to go back here. I was meant to go. The hotel lobby, sorry about that. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Library. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. Hmm, I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Hello, birds. Sorry, I'm not ignoring you. It looks like things here are... Re sorry. It looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Alright, we're going to keep moving and we're going to go to the Criminal Affairs Department. March 22nd, Police Station. Criminal Affairs Department. It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. McGrath's lawyer, right? Ah, yes, sir. Well, we finally found the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. A decisive witness? You mean for Mr. Regard's case? We're talking to the witnesses. We're taking the witnesses' statement now. I'll hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. M Mr. Nick? Between the kidnappers' demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something, pal. He did? Even though Mr. Now is our long over at detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. Eh? I've already called them, so they already know. Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content? It sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Well, they sound confident for sure. <laughs> Something's not right if they're too confident. Right. 
I guess we're going to talk to... Uh, go to the detention centre now, because there's two people in the detention centre now. There's uh, Matt on guard, obviously, and then there's Adrian Andrews after she admitted everything. So, yeah, there's two people in the detention centre. Well, I expect two people in the detention centre anyway. March 22nd, detention centre, visitors room. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. On Guard and Miss Andrews are in the detention center. Not together, though. Now then, whose story do I want to hear first? Um, we're going to hear Matt's story first, then um, and Miss Andrews. So let's talk to Matt. Dude, it's Mr. Right. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you, man. I... Hope so too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me and... That one corridor was killed by an assassin. And that assassin's client is... This man. Man on guard. <laughs> What's wrong, dude? Mr. On guard. There is something I know with 100% certainty. Huh? You seem kind of different. You're totally not like you usually lawyer dude self, man. I like this theme. Well, we're just going to talk to Matt about his secret right now. Um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Ron Curry was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah. I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. This is a flashback, so I'm not reading it. But there you go. Could you please fill me in on this secret is... Sorry. Could you please fill me in on what this secret is? Please? Oh, for Christ's sake. Holy mother of Chozos, he's got five psych locks. But he's been very cryptic lately, so... That doesn't surprise me that he's got some psych locks. It's about time he does, too. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, did they don't tell me? A psych lock. You said a secret, right? But you don't have any idea what it is, do you, dude? No, I don't. One and Adrian. Did you know about Mr. Corridor and Miss Andrews' relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Ah, but I know. I don't know any of the details. If that's what you... If that... Sorry, let me read that again. Ah. But I don't know any of the details, man. If that's what you mean, man. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life, dude. Miss Andrews, she had a proposed. She had a propose. Sorry, propose. I meant a purpose. Sorry about that. Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corridor. Her mentor was Mr. Corridor's manager. And Miss Andrews was going to get Celeste Impact's suicide note from him. Celeste? Does that jog any memories? <laughs> Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You're up for a pizza? My treat, man. Uh, Mr. Nick, what's a pizza? Is it a kind of pea like green pea? Let's go eat one later, okay? Ugh! I got cut off by... Uh, sorry. Ugh! I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop! That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off the topic and talk about something else, okay? <laughs> Mr. On Guard. Are you connected to Mr. Impax's suicide in some way? I'm guessing he is. Well, I think that's all we can ask from him, because he's being very cryptic, so... Yeah, let me just, um, let me just get out of here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. March 22nd, right in Kolor offices. It doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Well, he's out there with that camera asking around at all the electronic stores. Then I'll make some salad for him for dinner. Looks like Pearls really appreciates what Garbage is doing for us. Oh, uh, Mr. Nick? Huh? Yes? Where is the lettuce? I don't think I ever bought lettuce before. Oh wow. Oh, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. 
Just the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. We don't really need to talk to Pearls. Let's go back to the Criminal Affairs Department. March 22nd Police Station. Criminal Affairs Department. Who's that? Wait a minute. Is this the person that they were talking about? Snake, do you want to do this mysterious voice? Ah, uh, sure. Oh, Mr. Bright, please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. Oh god, it is him as well. Looks like you do have something. Oh, Jesus, not this stupid theme! But Mr. Powers! What happened? Why are you here? I, I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify for tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking to a detective until a while ago. I was on my way home. When all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest. And I was brought back here. Uh, oh. They said my face and whole self in general looks suspicious or something. Hmm. Well, I guess I could see why... How, sorry. Hmm. Well, I guess I could see how they thought you looked suspicious. Uh, I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? Alright, let's talk to Will Powers. So, about this testimony you'll give him, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. But it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? Ah, uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer, he said. Sorry, I kind of bite in there. I do sorry. I um, apologize for that, Snake. Uh, that's okay. Who is this, that lawyer the detective is talking about? I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's me. Y yeah, you got it. <sighs> Mr. Nick, Mystic, Ma Mystic Meyer and myself are the only two allies in this world, but it's alright. Ouch. I don't really have a f lot of friends, do I? I don't think so. This is going to be a lot of damage to man, you know. Because he's got that refreshing like a spring cream. <laughs> Sorry, I got a cold. Because he's got that refreshing like a spring breeze image going. Oh, that's alright, Snake, if you have a cold. But what's... Oh, sorry. That's my part, Snake. Oh, sorry. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. That's always been a kind of player with women. He would never really turn a pretty face away. You know what I mean. He'd always say it's just a game to justify himself. What? How horrible! That's unforgivable! Ow, S sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who would swoon, who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over it? His manager, you know, Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Ah, uh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities and their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A dazzling sort of image? But well, aren't you part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No. I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, Harry. So did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews mentoring a suicide? You mean Miss Impacts? We heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it for I thought about it a little the other day. About that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright. 
why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers is... Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Ha <laughs> ha, I see what you did there! I see what you did there! Yes, good, good one. He does look like Blanca. Well, he technically is Blanca to me. He looks like Blanca. I've always said that about Will Powers. He always looks like... He does look like Blanca. I see what you did there, though. So let's do suicide. Let's ask about him. Hey, so you... Have you heard about this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they said that one went and hid it. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any... There wasn't any... Act, sorry. But there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Warren, that is. Something bad for Mr. Corridor? <laughs> Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said it looks like I may have been caught by an insidious man. An insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Corridor by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be a reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. What a some good info. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Mr. Ongard and Miss Andrews, they're both at the detention center right now. There are still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Right, let's move back to the detention center because we still need to talk to Miss Andrews. <laughs> now then, whose story do I want to hear? Adrian Andrews. Oh, it's you. Hi, Samus. I'm sorry to be visiting you at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I... Sorry. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corridor had about Mr. God. Sorry, on Mr. On God. And this is where I'm going to end, end, have to end the video because it's been 27 minutes. And I don't want to take you, um, I don't want you to um, watch any longer because I know people get bored watching. So yeah, I was supposed to go 25 minutes, but then I started talking to Mr. Powers. So when we come back, folks, we'll talk to Miss Andrews and try and get her to talk about uh, this secret Matt has. Well, that secret one corridor was... Um, going to expose Matt with. Until then, until then. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody.